today. Please welcome Assistant Secretary for Elementary and Secondary Education, Mr. Frank Brogan. Thank you, Aria, for the kind introduction and for the outstanding rendition of America the Beautiful. Students like you are the future of America. Well, we've worked to make sure that your success is at the heart of all we do right here at the United States Department of Education. I'd also very much like to thank Ed's state and local engagement team for bringing us together, albeit virtually, this year. And most importantly, a big congratulations to the 2020 National Blue Ribbon Schools. This has been a unique and challenging year, yet out of nearly 140,000 schools in the country, you are 367 standout examples of tireless dedication to students, families, and your communities. You represent schools of every kind, public, private, charter, and magnet, from big cities, suburbs, and small towns, from 47 states, DC, and the Department of Defense Education Activity. Your schools are as unique as the students who learn in them, and yet you share many common goals and values. For example, your schools stress the importance of treating each student as an individual with their own unique talents and aspirations. You reject one-size-fits-all approaches to education. Tailored, self-paced, modern learning opportunities are especially important right now when more students are learning online than ever before. You've also engaged families as the first school, recognizing the primary and irreplaceable role parents play in shaping their own children's lives. Like you, we believe parents need the freedom, the choices, and the funds to make the best decisions for their children. We cannot and must not shrink from doing what's right for parents and their students. Each of this year's winning schools is preparing students for the demands of the future, including jobs that haven't even been invented yet. Your elementary students are learning robotics and coding. Middle school students participate in exchange programs and learn video game design. And in high school, your students grow their career and technical skills at on-site laboratories where they interact with local businesses and even universities. These real-world opportunities lead to summer employment, increased engagement, and new partnerships for your students. In fact, for many of you, project-based learning is the very heart of your curriculum. You help shape students' roles as civic leaders and problem solvers, enlisting them to help your communities overcome their unique challenges and meet their unique needs. Not only do your students complete required community service hours or participate in service learning days, but you integrate these opportunities into core subjects like math, writing, civics, and science. One of the most rewarding parts of my job is visiting schools like yours and learning from your own hard work. This is especially important now, as the COVID crisis has made families more aware than ever before about how and what their children are or are not learning. We want all students to have more opportunities to learn and achieve their God-given potential. I had the pleasure of hosting virtual showcases with award-winning elementary and middle schools in Pennsylvania and Ohio, and learned about the new ways your schools, students, and staff have banded together to achieve impressive outcomes. Along the way, you've overcome obstacles we could never have anticipated, but you never waver in your commitment to always putting students first. I was impressed by your dedicated administrators, caring and innovative teachers, supportive staff, thoughtful students, and engaged families and community leaders. We'll get where we want to go as a nation when students have more opportunities to learn like those I saw in action. 
Regardless of where you're from, what your school looks like, or who your students are, you have something to offer other school leaders looking for an example. I think back to the origins of this very award when in 1982, then Secretary of Education, Terrell H. Bell, wanted to bring attention to the best schools in the nation and give them a platform for sharing best practices. This year, we're navigating unprecedented challenges, and the need for creative, personalized solutions has never been greater. Some of your schools have gone virtual or are using a hybrid model. In-person learning may look different too. We encourage you to share these best practices while we offer support for whatever path your school community has taken. For our part, we've created a central landing page to share successful strategies for reopening schools and continuing learning without disruption. The new site, OESE Back to School Success Stories, includes testimonials submitted by parents, teachers, school officials, and community members. I encourage you to check out the site and submit your best practices so others might learn from your example. I'd also like to point out three great online resources that might help support your work during COVID-19. The Comprehensive Center Network, a site developed with an Ed Grant, offers a great deal of information to help you to ensure continuity of learning, support students with disabilities, and protect civil rights, among other information. Our Readiness and Emergency Management for Schools Technical Assistance Center can be a resource as well. It offers recommendations to build your preparedness, capacity, as well as critical information about safety, security, and emergency management programs. And our Institute of Education Sciences administers 10 regional education laboratories, or RELs, nationwide. RELs work with educators and policymakers to develop and use research that improves academic outcomes for students. You can find online their research in addition to helpful toolkits, guides, and other resources. We're also making available emergency taxpayer funding under the CARES Act for parents to choose how their students learn this school year. For parents who want to send their children to school in person, we support additional emergency federal taxpayer funding to support schools that safely reopen and offer in-person instruction. For parents who would rather their child learn virtually, we've set aside significant taxpayer funding to support improvements in distance education and other innovative models. And for parents who want their children to attend a school other than their neighborhood public school, we strongly support the bipartisan School Choice Now Act. A majority of the United States Senate recently voted for Senator Tim Scott's provision, which provides scholarships that will empower families to choose the best educational setting for their child. Families could use these types of scholarships to enhance distance learning or to pay for other costs tied to educating children at home. They could be used for tutoring, career and technical education, or transportation to a different school. The scholarships could support students attending the school that best meets their needs or matches their values. We support this approach because we share your view that every student must be respected as an individual with unique talents, passions, hopes, and dreams. Students deserve the right to learn in an environment that works for them, regardless of where they live, how much they make, and how they learn. As we navigate the remainder of this challenging school year together, I applaud your commitment to students and their lifelong learning journeys. 
We want every student to be able to recognize new opportunities, learn new skills, and explore new careers. Thank you for innovating on students' path to success, to high school graduation, and beyond. Congratulations again. Now, I'll turn it over to Abba Kumi for the presentation of your awards. Let's give a virtual round of applause to Aria and Assistant Secretary Frank Bogan. Thank you, Aria, for sharing your talents with us. Assistant Secretary Brogan, thank you for your inspirational, thoughtful, and motivational message. For those I haven't had the pleasure of being in contact with over the past eight months, I'm absolutely delighted to be with you today through our virtual reality. Congratulations, 2020 National Blue Ribbon School. If this is your first award, let me formally welcome you into the family of more than 9,000 National Blue Ribbon Schools. Collectively, as 2020 National Blue Ribbon Schools, you have provided your students with high academic expectations and support in learning environments where hard work, civility, and excellence are the norm. You have set examples of academic achievement that reflect our belief in the possibility of every student. You make a difference in your communities and create a brighter future for all the students. Of the 367 schools recognized this year, 92 are repeat awards. 72 are second timers, 17 have received the award three times, and two are four-time awardees. And one school has the distinction of receiving the award six times. Keep up the good work and continue to shine brightly. Like our former Secretary of Education, Terrell H. Bell, whose vision birthed the National Blue Ribbon Schools program, I believe in the power of education to give every child a fair chance and to equalize differences in backgrounds, culture, and privilege. As recipients of the 2020 National Blue Ribbon Schools Award, you are in a perfect position to pay it forward. This recognition is filled with courage and the belief that we can all come together and do what is right for children. Every day, your work as educators sends a ripple of hope for your students. Congratulations once again on your achievements. Now, it is my pleasure to acknowledge our friends and partners. We count on their support each year for the National Blue Ribbon Schools Award Ceremony. We are especially grateful to the National Association of Secondary Elementary School Principals, Executive Director, Dr. L. Franks, and the Director of Operations, Student Programs, and Special Projects, Luke Sparks. We would, like, we would also like to thank the Association for Middle Level Education Executive Director Stephanie Simpson and Board Chair John Barnes, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals Executive Director Joanne Bartoletti and Director of Public Affairs Dr. Bob Perez. Thank you again for helping us honor our 2020 Terrell H. Bell Award yesterday. We would also like to extend our sincere appreciation to the Council of Chief State School Officers and 2020 National Teacher of the Year, Tabitha Ross Boyd. We are grateful you were able to be part of this celebration and share your powerful message on early education. I would also like to use this opportunity to acknowledge our presenters, Youth Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman, former National Blue Ribbon School Principal Dr. Annette Jones, and Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. Thank you all for your graciousness and willingness to share your passion, wisdom, and expertise with our 2020 National Blue Ribbon School educators. Each year, a dedicated hardworking group of individuals from the State Departments of Education, the Council for American Private Education, and the Department of Defense Education Activity diligently review, identify, nominate, and support schools through the application and selection process for National Blue Ribbon School recognition. 
We ask a lot of these dedicated education leaders, and without their support, the department would not be able to recognize our growing American schools with this award. A virtual thank you for all the work you do. Finally, before we make the awards presentation, I'd like to use this opportunity to acknowledge and thank our incredibly hardworking and wonderful National Blue Ribbon Schools Programs team. This award ceremony would not have been possible without their tireless efforts. First, a huge thanks to our senior leadership, Acting Assistant Secretary Liz Hill and Deputy Assistant Secretaries Dan Miller and Daniela Garcia. Thank you for all your support. Thank you to Adam for your leadership, guidance, good counsel, and consistent support of the National Bureau Schools Program. Francis, thank you for being a great partner to work with and for encouraging me to focus on what matters most. Thank you, Katrina, for all your work for, on the National Blue Ribbon Schools Program, especially for paying attention to the little details that matter most. To our conference, events, management, and operations team, Anya, Kevin, Patrick, Christian, Adrian, and Patrice, thank you for helping us seamlessly switch to a virtual event and for continuing to do our complex logistics and working wonders behind the scenes. You are amazing. I appreciate all the efforts you put into this to make the ceremony a huge success. I'd also like to thank our technical assistance contract staff from RNC Research Corporation, Kim, Tracy, Judy, Bev, Jack, Sarah, Amanda, Alan, Erica, Deborah, Tim, and finally, Andrew. Thank you all so much for the work you do to support the National Bureau of Schools program. We really appreciate your hard work and commitment to the National Bureau of Schools. Because of time differences, we have split the awards presentation into two sessions. First, we are going to award the schools in the Eastern and Central time zones. And then for part two, we will award schools in the Central time zone, Western time zone, including Alaska and Hawaii. We encourage you to celebrate when your school is announced. Shake your pom-poms, wave your hands, jump up and down, make some noise, blast music, and of course, if you were in DC with me, we'll dance, dance, dance. Hello, this is Michael Shelawful with the Council for American Private Education, or CAPE. I just want to congratulate you on being named a National Blue Ribbon School. All of us who work in private education recognize the outstanding work that schools like yours are doing. They educate the whole person, mind, body, heart, and spirit. And now, the extraordinary circumstances of the last eight months have truly shown a light on just how important private schools are to their communities. So thank you for your hard work during these trying times. And once again, congratulations. Hello. I'm Dr. Darla Strauss, Director of Partnerships and Recognition Programs at the Maryland State Department of Education. I'm also the liaison for Maryland's Blue Ribbon Schools Program. Maryland has the nickname of American Miniature. Why? Because it features everything from mountains to the Chesapeake Bay to the Atlantic Ocean. But everywhere in Maryland, we congratulate our awesome Blue Ribbon Schools. They are high achieving and diverse and schools that go the extra mile for their students and teachers. And we all have been enduring a very, very difficult pandemic. Many of us refer to it as the unknown. But what we still know is that education will always be our number one priority. As we like to say in Maryland, we 
are Maryland strong. Congratulations to all of the Blue Ribbon schools. National Blue Ribbon Schools. You are making a difference in the lives of so many. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and 